This is video 24 in our series on tensor calculus. In this video, we'll derive an invariant relationship for the dot product in tensor calculus syntax. Here we have two vectors, vector u and v, each of which can be expressed as linear combinations using either the covariant basis here or the contravariant basis here. So let's see if we can find an expression for the dot product between these two vectors. Well, we'll start by using this linear combination and this linear combination together. And um, our dot product then would be u dot v. And we would have this first expression, ui, zi, like so. And we'll dot that with this expression. And of course, I've used i as a dummy index in this term, so I can't use it again. So I need a new letter for this combination. So vj, zj, like so. All right, now we'll group the vector values out front like this. And then we'll um, carry on with the remaining components, ui and vj, like so. Well, this expression is nothing but the covariant metric tensor. That's just the definition for zij. And we'll have the other factors left over, ui and vj, like that. So there's an expression for the dot product between u and v. But um, now let's go back and use the combination of this expression with this one and do it again. All right, so we'd start with ui, zi as before. But this time we're going to dot it with this expression. And again, I need a different letter. I've used i already as a dummy index. So we'll do this equals zi dot zj. But this time I'm dotting a covariant basis vector with a contravariant basis vector. And I have ui vj left over like that. Well, this time, our combination, our dot product between our vectors uh, has a different relationship. It was the, the covariant metric tensor before. Now it's going to produce a Kronecker delta. So that's delta j i with our remaining terms, u i v j. And we'll use the Kronecker delta to absorb the j index. And that leaves us just with this expression, u i vi, like so. OK, we'll keep going. We'll try this term in combination with this one now. So we start off with uh, ui in the lower position this time with a contravariant basis vector. We'll dot that with vj, again, a different letter, zj, like so. And I'll group the vectors again out front, like this, with our remaining terms of u, i, v, j. I made a mistake here. Um, you probably picked up on it. This is in the wrong position. That had to be up here, like that. All right, now again, this combination of these two vectors, just like this one, produces a Kronecker delta. This time it's delta ij instead of ji. But we can still use the Kronecker delta to absorb the j index this time. Uh, we, we absorbed j this way before. We'll do it in this direction this time. We could do either one, but by absorbing the j index, the expression turns out to be ui vi like this. OK, we've got one more possibility. And that is we can try this term 
in combination with this one. It's going to be U I Z I dotted with V J C J like so. Combine the vectors again. Z I dot Z J the leftover terms U I and V J here. Now this time, the combination of these two vectors dotted together gives us the contravariant metric tensor. So it's Z, I, J, with the indexes in the upper position. And now we have U, I, and V, J, like so. Okay, so after all of that, we have 1, 2, 3, four different ways of expressing the dot product between U and V. So let me um, consolidate all of that into one expression down below. So what do we have here? Well, if you were paying attention to the last video, you'll recognize these as invariant expressions you'll notice that all of the indices, such as i here, j, i here, i here, i and j here, all of these are dummy indexes. There are no free indexes in any of these expressions. And um, each of the expressions are made up of known tensor uh, components. We have the metric tensor and we have uh, vector components, all known to be tensors. So these are tensor equations in which all of the indices are contracted. That means that we have a result that is invariant. It's the same regardless of what coordinate system we choose to use. And that confirms what we already know about the dot product, that it is an invariant. It uh, qualifies as a geometric object because the dot product is a value that exists whether or not we use a coordinate system. Okay, next thing let's talk about is um, we've got four different expressions, but I want to point out that they really are the same thing, just varieties and variations on the same thing. First of all, you'll remember that these two forms are interchangeable. We said we could lower one dummy index and raise the other simultaneously and get an equivalent expression. So that's all this is. Now, what about this guy over here? Well, if you come bind this factor with this one, those two together is exactly what you would use to lower the V index to V I like so. And if we lowered this J index to I like this, that coupled with this factor simply gives us this. Likewise, this expression coupled with this one is what you'd use to raise the V index to I and that coupled with this guy gives you this one. So uh, these really are the same thing. They're just different varieties of the same expression. Now which one do you use? Well it depends on the circumstances. If all you know about your vectors is the contravariant components, well you'd use this expression. If all you know is the covariant components, well you'd use this one. And if you knew the covariant components of one vector and the contravariant components of the other, then you'd use one of these two expressions. Now let's take a few minutes to see how this uh, relationship would apply to Cartesian coordinates. After all, if it works for any coordinate system, it's got to work for Cartesian coordinates. So let's make sure that's true. First of all, let's remember that um, the component ux in Cartesian coordinates is the same as u1 either as a contravariant component or a covariant component. Remember that uh, contravariant and covariant objects in Cartesian coordinates are the same, they're identical. So we can replace an expression that has the index in the upper position with a 1 with ux, or if it's in the lower position, it can be ux. So the same is true for u y being equal to u two and and u z is u three and so on. Same is true for the v components. So let's um, take a look at 
this guy first right here and um, that would expand out to u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus u3 v3 and of course I think you can see where I'm going already if I replace this u1 with ux we'll get this and v1 is nothing but vx in this expression we're going to have uy vy and the third one of course is uz excuse me vz like so so um, you'll recognize immediately of course that this is the expression for the dot product in Cartesian coordinates now surely you can see as well that the um, these two are going to give the same result I mean all we're doing is, is flip-flopping the indexes you're still going to get the same guy here well what about this expression out here well um, it's got it, it's a double contraction it's got nine terms in it one for each value of I coupled with each value of J gives us nine terms however Hopefully you remember that the covariant metric tensor in Cartesian coordinates is just the identity matrix. Of the nine elements here, only three of them are non-zero. And they're the ones where i and j are equal, the diagonal elements, and all of those are equal to one. Well, um, that's going to expand out this way. It's going to be z11 times u1 v1 plus z 2, 2 times u2 v2 plus z3 3 u3 v3 and I think you can see where this is headed because each of these guys are equal to 1 so at the end of the day um, all we're left with are these three terms right here and of course that expands out to exactly this and I'll leave it up to you to go through the same exercise with uh, this expression you'll see it works the same way only the diagonal elements exist here and they're all one so the same thing happens just with the indices in the lower position so with that you see that each of these four expressions all result in exactly the same result which is this um, which is, of course, the known result for Cartesian coordinates. So we can safely say that our expression works for Cartesian coordinate. Now, all this leads us to a very important principle. Let's suppose I came across a, an expression like this, and I knew, of course, from its structure that it is an invariant expression. And then I discovered that it's true for Cartesian coordinates. Well, if that's the case, then I have to conclude that our expression is true for any coordinate system. So let me say that again. If I know I have an expression that works for one coordinate system, and it's also an invariant tensor equation, I know it must work for all equations. So let me show you how we can use this principle. Now let's suppose I'm starting from scratch, and I don't know anything about the tensor equation for the dot product, and uh, I want to develop one. Well, um, in fact, all I know is that the dot product in Cartesian coordinates looks like this. And I say to myself, I'd like to develop an expression in tensor calculus that works for all coordinate systems. And um, I, I don't know how to go through the derivation we went through before. This is all I know. Well, here's the question. Can I turn this somehow into a tensor equation by inspection? Well, let's uh, try a couple of things here. First of all, this um, is a summation. <clears throat> so it looks very much like this kind of summation, ui. And I'm going to put the summation symbol out here for now because you know that, that I can't do this in tensor calculus because uh, I can't have this, the dummy index in the lower position. But I could do something like this. In fact, you'll see this kind of expression in a lot of literature and linear algebra and so on about the dot product. This is 
just a, a simple way of writing this expression down after we're indexing the values of x, y, and z. But as a, a student of tensor calculus, I suddenly remember that vi in a lower position is the same as vi in the upper position in Cartesian coordinates. And that leads me to understand that I could have written this expression this way, summation of i 1 to 3 of ui vi, and now I know that I have a syntax that is valid in tensor calculus. So here, here's what I it boils down to. I know that u dot v can now be expressed as ui vi, because when I expand this out, I know I'm going to get this. So I have an expression that works for Cartesian coordinates, but I also have an expression that is a valid tensor equation. So if I have something that's, uh, that resolves to a known entity as a tensor equation, then I know it works in every situation. And then it's just a matter of realizing that this expression is the equivalent of ui vi, because I can flip-flop the indexes. And I also can replace vi over here with um, vj like this if I had this kind of uh, a factor out front. If I replace this with the same expression that it would take to raise this index. And likewise, if I can replace this one with Vj and a covariant metric tensor factor like this. So my point is we could have derived this expression we, we got before simply by inspection. We can come to this conclusion just by turning this into a tensor equation and then finding the other three possible forms like this. So we're going to use this technique quite often. Uh, we're going to find an expression that we know works in Cartesian coordinates, and then we're going to work to turn that into a tensor equation. And if we succeed in doing that, then we'll have an invariant expression that works for every coordinate system. And with all that having been said, I think this is a good place to stop for now. And we'll go over and uh, update our fact sheet. Our main takeaway for this video is simply this expression. It's an invariant expression because all of the indices are contracted. There are no free indexes. It's all dummy indexes. That means it's an invariant uh, relationship. And it means the result is the same in every coordinate system. And therefore, the dot product is an invariant expression or a geometric object. We also note that uh, the expression comes in four flavors. They're all equivalent, and it's just a matter of which of the components of the vectors you have to work with that you would uh, uh, use to decide which of these forms to use. OK, with that uh, having been said, we'll um, end this video. Next time, I will show you how this uh, relationship applies to each of our sample coordinate systems.